This is YSM Sports Media. I want to thank you for all your love and support. Really appreciate it. We wouldn't be able to do this without you. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now and click the notification button for all future content. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the James versus Dueler May media conference call. I will now turn the program over to Ray Flores. Thank you very much, operator, and thank you so much to the media joining us wherever you are around the world. We hope that all of you are safe and sound during these rather difficult times with the coronavirus pandemic that has encapsulated the entire world. But we are very excited for Fox PBC Fight Night on Fox FS1 and Fox Support this Saturday, August 8th, from the Microsoft Theater here in Los Angeles. We get going live 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific time, headlined by the fighters that we are going to be hearing from today. It features top welterweight sensation Jamal Shango James going head-to-head against former title challenger Tomas Delorme in a 12-round battle for the interim WBA welterweight championship. The broadcast also will feature Cuban sensation David Morrell Jr. stepping up in just his third professional fight to collide against unbeaten Lennox Allen in a 12-round WBA super middleweight interim title matchup in the co-main event. Plus, undefeated super lightweight prospect Omar Juarez, who gives back to his community of Bronzeville, Texas, will take on Willie Shaw in a matchup to open up the broadcast. Now, following the Fox PBC fight night at 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 Pacific time, we have more bouts on FS1. It features welterweight Michael Fox battling Lucas Santa Maria in a twelve or in a ten round matchup. Michael Fox twenty two and one, five knockouts. Santa Maria ten one and one with seven knockouts. Eighteen year old prospect Vito Melnicki Jr., the pride and joy of New Jersey, will battle Chris Rollins in a six round super welterweight matchup. Melnicki with an unblemished record. Also speaking of perfect records, we have an eight round clash of two heavyweights. Unbeaten prospects, Luis Pena will match up against Michael Coffey. Pena, 6-0 and with all of his wins by knockout. Coffey, 9-0 with six wins coming by way of knockout. Let us begin the action on FS1. Now, without further ado, this man has been working so hard and diligently over the past several years and constantly is putting together tremendous matchups, a man who no doubt is destined for the International Boxing Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the president of TGB Promotions, my dear friend, Mr. Tom Brown. Well, thank you, Ray, and thanks, everyone, for joining us for this conference call today for the return of Fox PBC Fight Night. We're thrilled to be back on Fox, FS1, and Fox Deportes, headlined by this great main event, for the WBA Interim Championship, and one of boxing's hottest divisions, the welterweights. Uh, Jamal's last four fights have all been up in the Minneapolis Armory, He's really built a great hometown base up there in Minnesota. So it's too bad we weren't able to get this thing off the ground like it was originally scheduled for back on April 11th in front of his hometown fans. And prior to the pandemic, this was one of the fights on our schedule I was really looking forward to. So it's great that it's the feature attraction for PBC's return on Fox. And Thomas DeLarme has proven to be a force in the welterweight division where he's fought the top level of competition. And I've, I've heard some great things over the last month, month and a half, coming out of the Coachella Valley with this training. It's a big test for both fighters Saturday night, and the winner will elevate his standing in the division. Now, normally on a call like this, this is about the point in a time where I would say tickets are on sale now for the live event at so-and-so. But it's a different world, man. And it's very tough doing these events during this time. And you really have to applaud the fighters and everyone involved in getting boxing back going again. And as Ray said, following the Fox broadcast, FS1 will televise four separate additional fights. So there's going to be nonstop action and a lot of excitement on Saturday night. I'll turn it back to Ray. Thanks. Thank you very much, Tom. And now it gives me a great honor and a pleasure to introduce a man who has a record of 26-1, 12 knockouts, representing his hometown of Minneapolis, Minnesota. He has a passionate fan base. They absolutely love him. As Tom mentioned, he was supposed to headline against Delorme before COVID-19, the pandemic. His last bout came last July, an exciting decision victory over former champion Antonio DeMarco. He's won six straight victories, including beating the likes of Diego Chavez, Abel Ramos, 
and JoJo Dan. He gives back to his community of Minneapolis, Minnesota, a wonderful representation for the sport of boxing and the youth in the Minneapolis area. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the top contender from Minneapolis, Minnesota, Jamal Shango James. Jamal? Hey, what's going on, y'all? Thank y'all for having me, man. It's good to be back. Jamal, if you have any opening comments. Yeah, yeah, I just said, uh, you know, thank you guys for having me. It's good to be back, you know. Uh, come Saturday, I'm going to give everybody the fireworks they've been waiting on, and I'm glad to have this opportunity. And now we will open it up to the operator if the media has any questions for Jamal Shango James. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, if you have any questions, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, that's star one on your telephone keypad to enter the question queue. Okay, looks like our first question will come from Keith Idek. Keith, your line is now open. Yes, my question is for Jamal. Uh, Jamal, I know there's obviously nothing you can do about it, but is there any disappointment in that you couldn't fight for the, the in this title fight in your hometown? Uh, you know, it would have been nice to be to been able to fight in the hometown, but I wouldn't really say I'm disappointed. I'm I'm really more blessed and happy to be able to get back in the ring at all. You know what I mean? Uh, When it got postponed and the pandemic really hit like that, I had no idea when I'd be back in the ring or or anything like that. So with so much people, you know, out of work and unable to do things, I'm just glad to have this opportunity, man, and and, uh, I'm going to make the most of it. Uh, when I spoke to Thomas DeLorme the other day, he said that one of the things that he feels separates the both of you is that he has fought a higher level of opposition. I was just wondering what your perspective is on that. Um, he's fought some good competition, you know what I mean? But so have I. I don't know if you want to say higher level or not. I would say, you know, he's fought guys that might have a little bit bigger names, you know what I mean, if that's what he's talking about. Um but at the end of the day, you know, once we get in there Saturday, we're going to find out, <laughs> you know, uh, who, who who got the best skills, you know, and that's what it's going to come down to. Thank you, Jamal. All right. Our next question will come from, looks like, Charles Hallman. Charles, your line is now open. Thank you. How you doing, James? I hope everything is all right with you and the family. Uh was it, what did you, did you have to do anything different in your training after you realized that the fight was going to be postponed uh, because of the virus and how did you deal with trying to get yourself back into fighting shape once you found out the fight was going to be called back on? Yeah, well, we always stay in shape, you know what I mean? Uh, we definitely just slowed down the intensity of training once it got postponed just because we didn't know when we would be back on again. But even in between fights, uh, I stay I stay training, man. I stay in the gym. You know, this is a full-time job for me. Until I decide to retire, I'll probably always make sure that I have, you know, time in a day where I'm putting in some, some work. So once we got the word that we was going to be back on, then, you know, we just turned up the heat a little bit on the training. But I never allow myself to get too far out of shape or anything like that. If you if you follow up, you can speak on the fact that you and David is, again will be fighting on the same card, and you are both in the same staple uh, in terms of, as well as fighting on a national stage, so to speak. Or you've been fighting mostly in Minneapolis. How important is you that you be able to show the world your skills that all of us in Minneapolis have seen over the last few few months? I mean, it's important every time you get in there, no matter where you at. You know what I mean? Uh, I've been blessed to been able to bring back. Uh, world-class events to Minnesota, but before I was fighting back in Minnesota, I was traveling. I fought in California before. I fought in Alabama. I fought all over. Uh, You know, as long as the ring got four corners and the opponent got two arms, two legs, and a head like I do, I'm going to show out. You know what I mean? So, obviously, you know, it's a bigger fight because you got the, the belt on the line and stuff like that, but the reality is all those fights, all my previous fights were just as big. If I wasn't wasn't able to win or get past those fights, and I wouldn't be in this position now. So it's, it's another big fight to me, you know. Thank you very much. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you, man. All right. Our next question will come from Dan Cole. 
Dan, your line is now open. Thank you very much. So, um, Jamal, in preparation for this fight, you know, when watching film of maybe some of Delorme's previous fights, was there anything about his fighting style or something of that nature that really jumped out at you? You know, he's just a strong, he's a good, strong fighter, man. Um, I see, you know, he gets those nice punches, nice combinations. Nothing necessarily that jumps out. Every fighter has, you know, something that they like to do a little bit more than others. Every fighter has their own kind of, you know, their own tricks that they use. But I have my I have my own too, you know what I mean? And that's what makes fights so fun because when you put those two against each other, then you can see, you know, what's going to be able to prevail or not. Um, I'm not underestimating him. I know he's going to come out, uh, you know, fully capable and to the best of his ability. But I'm feeling extremely confident. I've trained extremely hard. I put in and paid my dues in the ring, you know, just like he has. So I'm coming to win. Awesome. And um, one follow-up for that, um, obviously, you know, there's been the fight venue switching from Minneapolis to California. And obviously it's going to be a slight disadvantage not having your hometown in front of you. But just how do you think that having no fans, no crowd noise, how do you think that might impact the fight? You know, I've said in other interviews, man, you know, when you're in the ring and those punches start flying, man, you kind of, your main focus is on your opponent and, and trying to hear what your corner is saying, you know what I mean? So you really don't even hear the crowd too much. It's like white noise, you know. You, you, I, you'll you hear the crowd if, like, you're just totally dominating the fight and you, you're more relaxed in there. Then you can hear people shouting stuff and the oohs and ahs, but at least for myself, I, I really zone in. So having no crowd in there, I don't think it's truly going to affect me as much. I think it'll, it'll allow me to kind of be able to hear my corner better and allow me to be able to zone in a lot more on what I'm trying to do. But, you know, we'll, we'll see Saturday, I guess. <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah. All right. Thank you, Shango. Thank you, man. And our next question will come from Carlos Toro. Carlos, your line is now open. Hi, thanks so much for taking time uh, to talk to us. You know, when this fight was first canceled or postponed, I should say, due to COVID-19, was there a worry from at least your side that maybe this fight is not going to happen based on everything that's been going on with the world and the U.S. and the cases kind of number kind of going up? Was there a worry that you thought that, you weren't going to get this opportunity to fight for this title uh, on this stage uh, later this year? It wasn't necessarily too much of a worry, you know, to be honest. You know, when all this stuff started happening, uh, I was more concerned with what was going on with the pandemic, you know, and I'm just happy that that my family and friends and stuff was safe. And I was just, you know, I mean, I definitely wanted to get back in the ring, but more than that, I wanted to see what was going on with everything and and, and trying to figure out how we can uh, come to some type of uh, solution with all this craziness, you know. And then, you know, coming from Minneapolis, the whole George Floyd incident happened. So it, it was, you know, I was just blessed that I, myself was safe and my family was safe, man, you know, and that's, that's what was on my mind first. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, with this being the first PBC on Fox show back, what does it mean to you that you're not just getting this opportunity to fight for a title in a, you know, on this stage, but to be the first main event back? What does it mean to you to just to be able to get this opportunity to get the same type of opponent, same uh, title at stake for this for this event? It's truly a blessing. You know what I mean? Uh, it means a lot. It, you know, allow. It, it, it feels like I'm finally getting acknowledged, you know, for, for my skills and for the work I've put in. So, you know, I'm happy. I'm happy, and I'm glad to have this opportunity, and I'm going to take advantage of it, man. And I, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to definitely uh, make sure that people know that I appreciate the opportunity. Thanks so much, and uh, best of luck in the fight. Thank you, man. appreciate it. All right. Um just wanted to remind participants how to re-enter the question queue. It is star one. So, again, if you have questions, please press star one on your telephone keypad. 
I'll now turn the program over to TJ Reeves. TJ, your line is now open. Thank TJ you, Jamal. Parks, you oh, good luck. Hey, hey, thanks, man. Jamal. Thank oh, you. No. Good luck. Hey, quick question. It's a weird time, a weird world. What have the last few days been like? Because I assume you're already there and there's testing going on and a, and a bubble in progress. What has that part been like, please? You know, to be honest, it ain't been too bad, man. Uh, you got to be, uh, you know, we're, we're quarantined on certain floors and, you know, we're urged to, you know, kind of stay in the rooms and stuff, except for when we got to set for our designated times to train and eat and stuff like that. But it's really not too bad, man. You know, I'm glad. I'm just glad, to be honest. I'm glad to have the opportunity. I'm glad to be getting back in the ring. A lot of, like I said before, man, a lot of people are out of work. It's hard for a lot of people out there. So for me to be able to get this opportunity and, and be able to provide for my family a little bit after this bout, you know, is truly a blessing. One quick follow-up because everybody's following up. What can you compare Saturday night? You haven't done it yet. Fighting in front of no fans. Have you ever been in any kind of a circumstance like that to draw off of? Thank you. Good luck. You're out of time in the gym, man. You ain't got no fans when you sparring. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're doing long rounds in the gym. Um, outside, e- e- Even earlier on, you know, when I first started my pro career, a lot of times, you know, you would fight. Uh, after main events or something, if you were like a swing bout or something, you have to go on after main events and stuff like that. And there wouldn't be people in the crowd like that. A lot of people be leaving out. So, again, you know, as long as the ring has four corners and the opponent got two arms and two legs with a head, then we're going to get it on. You know, whoever whoever's tuning in or who, whoever is there in person, those, those are the people that's definitely going to get their show. All right, our next question will come from Keith Idek. Keith, your line is now open. Jamal, you've had a uh, more up-close view of David Morrell's development than anyone. I was just wondering what you've seen from him since he came to Minneapolis and how he's developed as a fighter and what type of potential you think that he has moving forward. Oh, man, he's a phenomenal athlete. He's a phenomenal fighter, man. You know, he came here. He's already been, you know, blessed with a tremendous tremendous amount of skill and ability um i think he's going to make some serious noise in his weight class he trains extremely hard always has you know uh, a lot of energy and a positive outlook on things and he could hit man the cat hits like a sledgehammer throws nice combination has extremely quick reflexes man He's, he's going to go far. He's, gonna, he's definitely about to get this belt, and I just can't wait to get in here so we can show our skills off so we can both turn with these titles, you know. Jamal, what does it say about his ambition? He, he's fighting only in his third professional fight, and he's fighting an opponent with 23 fights. What does that say about his willingness to prove himself against uh, more experienced opponents? That he's hungry, man, you know, and I can see it when he trains. He's extremely hungry, you know. He's coming out of Cuba, man. Them cats are fighting all the time. You know, they, they don't get opportunities to turn pro, so their amateur careers is almost like pro career somewhat, you know what I mean? Obviously, they're not doing the rounds. It's slightly different being amateur from pro, but coming out of Cuba, you know, these cats is fighting hard, and he was a top athlete out there. He was winning in a lot of international competitions. You know, he's been through a lot, and you, I could tell, you know, just from talking to him and just from seeing how he moves, that he's extremely hungry and he wants this. And, you know, he's going to show – he'll show himself. You know, he'll show everybody himself once he gets in there and starts performing like that. But, you know, I definitely think he's ready, you know, even with just these fights, just from what I've seen in the gym. Uh, I think he's ready to, to, you know, get tested like that. Thanks for your time, Jamal. Thank you. All right. Our next question will come from Francisco Salazar. Francisco, your line is now open. Hello, Jamal. How, how are you today? I'm good, man. Thank you. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. Just a couple of questions. Sorry if I jumped on the line and um, uh, I might have repeated questions. It won't be about fighting in front of no fans. I won't ask that. It's been asked. <laughs> okay. Finally in times. So, um, 
you know, Thomas Delorme has fought, uh, you both have fought, you know, equal amount of decent, modest, you know, uh, level fighters. Uh, you know, obviously he's had, he's had some very solid wins. He's had some solid defeats. Which, uh, you know, which, which film have you been studying more? The fights where he fought um, Terrence Crawford or some of the more recent fights, like with, against Jesse Vargas? Uh, a little bit of both. I've seen, I've seen him in the uh, Crawford fight, and I watched his last fight, you know, and uh, some of his other ones. Um, and, you know, when watching film, at least, he, he, it gives you kind of an idea, you know, and it gives you a guy's mm. kind of rhythm and stuff like that when they fight. If you don't want to get too caught up thinking that they're going to fight exactly the same, you know what I mean? Because just like I'm studying him. He's studying me. So, you know, if I come out thinking he's going to fight me like he fought Vargas or like he fought Crawford, that's, mm-hmm. you know, that's not reasonable. I'm, I, I, I come with a whole different set of gifts and stuff like that. I'm a lot taller than those guys, so he might come out and fight me totally different. And if I wasn't prepared for that or if I'm not able to adjust to that, then I'm not going to, you know, then the fight may not go well for me. So, when I watch the fights, I just kind of look for little things and see what, what kind of rhythm he's throwing in and stuff like that. And then I go to work on my own stuff and how I can use it to to my advantage once we get in there. Mm-hmm. True. Um, you know, you, you're, you're, you and Thomas are playing from a title belt. Uh, do, you, do you see yourself um, amongst the elite fighters at 147, you know, Gabon, you, you get this win, but like, do you see yourself and measure yourself among the best with the Manny Pacquiao, the Keith Thurman, the Terrence Crawford? Uh, how do you, you know, where do you measure yourself? Do you believe you're a top five fighter, top ten fighter? Where do you measure yourself at a fighter that has both ten pounds? Yeah, man, I, I definitely believe I'm I'm a top five fighter. You know what I mean? Top three fighter, man. I definitely believe I'm in that. That type of class and that type of category, you know what I mean. I've been winning, I've been fighting, you know, and proving it. Um, I guess you know, there's, there's no way then to keep proving myself. I guess until I can get those type of fights with those guys, you know what I mean. But that's what we've been waiting on, waiting on title shots, waiting on those type of opportunities. Um, and that's not looking past any opportunity that I get, though. So I'm not looking past Delorme because, you know, he's definitely tough. He's going to be, a, you know, he's going to come to bring it and fight just like I am. And he's been in there with some cast and got his own little tricks. But I'm going to prove to people, you know, that I'm I'm a force to be reckoned with. You know what I mean? And so if I got to, you know, show people by getting past him, then that's what I got to do. And hopefully this will, you know, slingshot me up to getting one of those bigger, bigger name guys, you know, or trying to unify title or something like that. That's the ultimate goal. All right. Thank you guys very much, Jamal. Thank you so much for your time. Jamal, if you have any final comments as we get ready to talk with your opponent, Tomas Delorme. Final comments, Jamal. I just want to, you know, thank you guys for having me, man. Big shout out to Fox. Big shout out to PBC, man, and thank you for this opportunity. And, and of course, all the love and respect to all my supporters out there. Please follow me on all social media accounts. Just look up Shango Nation. And I also check out uh, the nonprofit organization that I train out of and, and uh, work with called the Circle of Discipline. If you go to circleofdiscipline.org, you can see the stuff we do. Thanks, man. Really appreciate Jamal James taking the time out to speak with the media. Now we will turn our attention to the man who will be standing across the ring from Jamal James this upcoming Saturday. Don't forget, PBC Fox Fight Night comes your way. Fox and FS1 and Fox, we go live on Fox 8 o'clock Eastern by Pacific Time, presented by Premier Boxing Champions, as we welcome in a man who is fighting and representing the country of Puerto Rico most recently defeated the unbeaten Terrell Williams in September. After before that, he had a majority draw against two division world champion Jesse Vargas. Actually, rebounded from a 140-pound title opportunity against Terrence Crawford. 
He came back with two back-to-back knockouts before losing a narrow decision to top welterweight. Your Dennis Ugas on Fox in 2017. His record, 25 wins, three losses, one draw, 16 wins coming by way of knockout. He represents the rich boxing country of Puerto Rico. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Tomas Delorme. Tomas. Hi, 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 everybody. I'm being here. Now, if the media has any questions for Tomas Delorme, by all means, he's here for all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, that's star one to enter the question queue. Again, that's star one to enter the question queue. And our first question will come from Carlos Gonzalez. Eh, saludos, Tomás. Espero que esté todo bien. Saludos, Carlos. ¿Cómo estás? Todo bien, todo bien. Gracias. Mi pregunta es la siguiente. Eh, hace unos años eras considerado una figura en ascenso y potencial campeón mundial, pero sufriste esos tropezones, esas derrotas. ¿Qué, qué entiendes tú que ha pasado y qué, qué, qué ajustes o cambios hiciste para ponerte en esta posición? Pero nosotros pues, tuvimos otros personas, tuvimos que empezar otra vez, empezar de cero, seguir trabajando duro y yo pienso que ese es lo que tuve que hacer, es tener constancia y seguir obteniendo pues resultados encima del ring y pues para lograr llegar a esta posición otra vez. La pregunta fue, a few years back, uh, Tomás was one of the rising fighters uh, coming up and then he suffered a couple of losses. And what did he have to do to, you know, get himself back to, to where he's at now? What changes did he make? And he said he started back from the bottom and just worked his way up. And that's where he's at now, and he's trying to win the world title. Eh, y entonces, ¿qué peleas? ¿Podrías decirnos que fue esa que, que aprendiste algo que dijiste, no, yo tengo que hacer unos cambios eh, radicales para poder ponerme en posición de un título mundial nuevamente? The question Mira, is... Um, uh, Hold on a second. The question was, what fight was it that um, that you decided you had to make a change? Pues, no, no fue alguna pelea en específica. Yo simplemente sabía que yo tenía que tener este algunas peleas con nombres, con 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 peleadores que estén en los en las mejores posiciones y podrá y poder demostrar que pues yo siempre ha sido un peleador bueno y que estoy entre los mejores. He said it wasn't any one specific fight. He just knew that he had to face uh, ranked fighters, you know, some of the top guys, so that he could show he belongs right up there with them. Uh, gracias, Tomás. Suerte. Gracias. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to go ahead and remind everyone to please press star one to enter the question queue. Again, that's star one for questions. And it looks like our next question will come from Kenneth Buhari. Yeah, hi, Thomas. I have a couple questions. The first one being, what would a win on Saturday night mean for you? The first question is, what would a win on Saturday night mean for you? What would a win on Saturday night mean for you? All the victories are important. This is also important. I'm going to move a little further ahead to look for better mejores peleas que para el futuro. He said every um, eight and every win is important. Uh, victory on Saturday will move him a step closer, get him closer to what he wants, which is obviously a full world title. Can can you tell us what you think of Jamal James as a fighter and how you see the fight playing out? Piensas de Jamal James de peleador y cómo piensas que va a ir la pelea. Yo pienso que Jen es un buen peleador, él tiene su habilidad para llegar a, a este punto de, 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 de nivel y de la forma que yo pienso que se va a acabar la pelea, yo creo que se va a acabar antes del 12. He said um, that he thinks Jamal James is a good fighter. Obviously his talent and ability got him to this position where he's at right now and how he thinks the fight will go, he doesn't see it going to the um, 12th round. All right, thank you so much, Thomas. Best of luck to you on Saturday. Thank you so much, sir. Thomas, I have a question for you in regards to, you know, you represent Puerto Rico right now. Puerto Rico, to my knowledge, 
doesn't have a world champion, uh, how much would that bring uh, such a great deal of pride if you're able to win the title on Saturday night against Jamal James? Dice que tú representas a Puerto Rico y en este momento no tiene un campeón, la isla. ¿Y qué significa para ti para llevar un título a la isla? Pues para mí significa mucho, para mí significa pues todo. Por eso estamos aquí, vamos a trabajar duro el sábado. Y para mucha gente significa mucho también, no solamente para mí, pero para mucha gente que están apoyando, significa algo grande. It means a lot to him. It means a lot to get here and to fight and to win a world title. And not just to him, but it means a lot to a lot of people, you know, back home on the island. A lot of people are pulling for him and rooting for him and really want him to win the title for Puerto Rico. Another point I'd like to ask for, you know, Thomas is that, you know, this fight was scheduled for, for April 11th. And, you know, we're starting to see fights be rescheduled in light of the pandemic. But how aware was him and also, you know, well, Diaz about not overtraining and making sure that he's peaking at the right time and not burning himself out in training because this fight was scheduled on April 11th and now we're here heading to August 8th for this matchup. Dice que esta pelea originalmente era para el 11 de abril y obviamente se canceló y tú quedaste ahí y, y uh, empezaste entrenando otra vez. ¿Qué era el clave para no uh, dejar todo en el gimnasio para entrenar pero con inteligencia que todavía estás fuerte por el 8 de agosto? Pues tuvimos que hacer unos cuantos ajustes o él hizo unos cuantos ajustes en el gimnasio. Algunos, algunas semanas tuve semanas libres, otros pues empezamos a trabajar y hasta que tuvamos, tuvimos un día exacto, pues pudimos empezar a trabajar o, otra vez. He said, um, yes, um, Joel, his trainer, Joel Diaz, had to make a few adjustments. Um, definitely, he stayed in um, Indio, down where he trains at during the whole time. He didn't even go home. And uh, he took a couple weeks off, and he was still training, but he wasn't going, like, full 100% training until he had the exact date, and then they made another adjustment to make sure that he would be um, – Do you like the fact that you're fighting someone in Jamal James who is aggressive and likes to come forward and enjoys mixing it up because, you know, it, it seems like it, he's not going to be very hard to find. And, you know, I know that you like to stand and trade and engage in back and forth fights as well. ¿Te gusta el estilo de James que le gusta mover? Um, Enfrente y para pelear y tú vas a tener que buscarlo, que él va a estar ahí y él le gusta intercambiar golpes y dice que tú te gusta lo mismo, a intercambiar y estar ahí en el medio del ring. Pues yo pienso que sí, que, que, que va a ser una pelea muy buena, pues James pues le gusta estar ahí al frente y, y pues no anda pues haciendo un, un boceo tan, tan limpio, pero va a ser una buena pelea, no, va un, no sé la estrategia que él traiga para esta pelea, lo voy a descubrir en el primer asalto, pero este va a ser una gran pelea. He said, yeah, he thinks his style will present a, a good fight, his style in James. But yeah, he likes to, um, you know, always be in front, um, stand there and throw punches. He doesn't know exactly what style James is going to bring to the ring on Saturday. It's possible he changes it up, but he thinks that their styles will go together and the fans will get a great fight. All right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, it's star one to enter the question queue. Again, that's star one for any final questions. And at this time, it doesn't look like anyone else is joining the queue. Okay. Oh, terrific. Wait, well, right we, we, now, real know. quick, real quick, do we want to take this one final question from Carlos? By all means. Okay, great. So, all right, thank Carlos you, thank Gonzalez. You, right. Just ya, yo soy una persona. Última pregunta, Tomás. Eh, sí. ¿Cómo ves el, el, el haber ido de Puerto Rico eh, en, en un momento dado para entrenar fuera y eso te ayudó en mantener eh, un nivel de concentración distinto? Mira, sí, me, 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 ha ayudado, me ha ayudado mucho a tener un nivel de concentraciones este, diferente. También ha aprendido mucho de muchos peleadores élites aquí en los Estados Unidos y pues me, me, sí me ha ayudado bastante. The question was, um, you know, how does it affect them or help them to train outside of Puerto Rico? Um, and Tomás said it's helped them a lot. Um, 
And the question was also, does he focus better? And he said, yeah, he focuses great out here. And not only that, but there's just different style of fighters here in the United States, and he's learned a lot from being around the other um, fighters. All right. Thanks a lot. Muchas gracias. Gracias. All right, if we have any final comments from uh, Tomas Delorme as he gets set to battle Jamal Shanko James for the interim WBA welterweight championship of the world this upcoming Saturday, PBC Fox Fight Night on Fox 8 Eastern by Pacific Time. Tomas, final comments. Los comentarios para la pelea, Tomas. Bueno, está, estamos muy felices por tener esta pelea, muy felices por la oportunidad que todo el mundo esté pendiente para ver esta pelea el sábado en la noche, 8 de agosto, y vamos a dar una gran pelea. So yeah, he's very happy, um, you know, to be here, that the fight's here on Saturday night, and it's going to be a great fight for um, all the fans that will be watching, and they can be, um, they can guarantee a great fight. Thank you very much to Tomas Delorme, Ryan Burton, his translator, and also Jamal Shango, James Tom Brown. Don't forget Jamal James, Tomas Delorme, this Saturday, PBC, Fox Fight Night, on Fox 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific Time, following the main telecast. Flip on over to Fox PBC Fight Night on FS1, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific Time, a full slate of action as well. Thank you guys so much. Stay safe. And we are just so honored and thrilled to have from your boxing champions back inside the boxing ring. Have a great one. Stay safe. And we'll see you this weekend. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this does conclude your call. You may now disconnect your lines.